and welcome to Build. I'm Sam Thompson, and as always, we are live in London. Now I am joined right here by multi-talent actor. He starred in such films as Godswood Park, Becoming Jane. He writes, he sings, he plays guitar. He's probably the coolest man I've ever met. Please put your hands together for Lawrence Fox. <laughs> Look at him, he's wearing a biker jacket in Converse. Wow. Looking very cool, my man. Thank you. Uh, before we get started, if anyone watching at home has any questions whatsoever, please feel free to tweet us at Build Series LDN or if you're watching this on Facebook Live, just leave a comment below. Now, Lawrence, where do we start with you? So many talents from such a talented family as well, may I just say. Thank you. Um, I don't know. You choose. Where to <laughs> I think we should start with Victoria. You're on your third series. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about your character in this new series? I am playing a guy called Lord Palmerston, who was a bit of a lechy, nasty, but quite clever, uh, interesting British statesman of the time. He was the Foreign Secretary, and uh, he winds up Victoria a lot and womanises a lot. Yeah, that's why. Wow. Someone to not look up to. Yes, don't look up. Well, no, do look up to him. Mean, you know, it's, they, they make it, uh, they've televised it, you know, so they've made it more palatable than perhaps he might have been at the time. And we are at 1848 right now, I do believe. Are we? Yeah. And uh, right. if my history GCSE serves me correctly, that was a very turbulent time. Chartists, revol yeah, French revolution, the early French stuff, yeah. It was, it was it's pretty turbulent time in Europe, the as they got rid of lots of the monarchies of Europe and replaced them with republics, yeah. So um, it's hardcore. And it's, it's, a, it's good and full of action, the, uh, the show, so it's good. Any of your best bits? I just ride a lot of horses and flirt a lot, which is fun. I enjoy that. <laughs> that sounds great! I would love to do that. Yeah. And uh, Lord Palmerston, he has some interaction with uh, Victoria and Albert, doesn't he? He does, yeah, he reports to Victoria and Albert, and he's a bit, he's quite anti-Albert because Albert's German, and he's a bit of a, I think they kind of based Lord Palmerston on, on Boris Johnson, or Boris Johnson, <laughs> Boris Johnson based himself on Lord Palmerston, who knows? But yeah, he's quite, there's quite a lot of Boris Johnson going on, and quite a lot of Willy Wonka as well. That, Willy Wonka in there? A little bit, you know. <laughs> I love that. Fresh. Boris Johnson and Willy Wonka. Have I ever thought I'd hear those two in one sentence? I think they're quite similar, aren't they? <laughs> fair play. And you actually come from um, acting royalty, to be fair. Your family, I mean, they're all super talented. I can only wish that my sister was better. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but uh, you, Amelia and, uh, and Freddie Fox, they're your cousins. Do you yeah. guys get competitive at all? No. I was on the phone to Amelia this morning in the car on the way in talking about child rearing. Um, so, yeah, we don't really talk about acting as it, it being the family business. We tend to talk about anything but, as I suppose most people do, with, who have jobs that, um, you know, you don't take your job home with you, do you? So we tend to talk about other stuff. So there's no family plot to uh, take over the world then? It's not worked thus far, so um, we'll see. Yeah, there's always a family plot to take over the world. Of course there is, mate. You should hear mine. What I've got short? seven shortboards in my room. Oh, nice. <laughs> and, uh, well, talking about child rearing then, you know... Who, are you the best? Do you think you're the best dad at that? No, definitely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. In order to be a semi-decent parent, you've got to know that you're not a very good parent and try and improve on your parenting at all times. Otherwise, it's, you know... I mean, I, I'm, mo I'm more old school than would be appreciated nowadays. I don't give everybody a prize. You know, there is definitely a winner at FIFA 19 on the computer. It's not like, let your brother score three goals, you know. It's... Um, you know, I encourage competition with my boys. I like it. it makes them more boyish. I'm kind of the same. I'm going to be honest, when I have kids, okay, if you don't come first, you don't eat. Not at my table. Well, they're not encouraged <laughs> to do that nowadays, are they? <laughs> well, not in the Thompson household, all right, man? <laughs> but look, you know, we're straying way off piece right now. Back to Victoria. What's it like to act in that time period? Uh, it's very much like acting in this time period, but with a costume on. <laughs> um, you know, so... Uh, it's nice, look, I mean, you know, you get to film in those uh, crazy old houses, and uh, it, I like the costumes, not so good for the girls, the costumes, they all had these weird centre partings, and it's great to ride on horses and be in the Houses of Parliament, it's, you know, it's essentially like being a big child, isn't it, acting, it's not really a job for grown-ups. Well, I mean, they should definitely cart me in then, for sure. In we go. <laughs> Are the costumes as uncomfortable as they look? 
No, the, the men's costumes are great. The, I mean, that that wasn't particularly fun, that costume. <laughs> um, the wig was a bit uh, on your scalp. But um, no, the men's costumes are okay. But, you know, you've, you, I feel sorry for the girls because they've got big old corsets on and they really squeeze. They can't breathe. Can't breathe. They all say that they're getting really painful kidneys. And, you know, they, they leave proper welts on you. So um, the men get off lightly, as per. And I, I believe back in that time period, you all had to wear sort of... Um like white all over your face, didn't you? Only in these. This is a ball scene. There was a sort of. I can't remember what it was called. A. Uh, I can't remember what it was called. But it was a. You know, a period ball. So yeah, they threw a lot of white at our face and odd coloured beauty spots, and we had to learn dances. And in my case, danced pretty badly. I can't wait to see that. I'm going to be honest. With you. you don't dance badly. He I says do. that, and then you see him on the D floor, and he's busting shapes <laughs> like you wouldn't believe. I've actually heard you are quite a joker on set as well. Is that true? Well, you know, it's a long day, isn't it? It's, uh, it's you're there, you get picked up for, you know, that's me proposing to Jenna. Didn't go down well. Um, <laughs> you get picked up very early in the morning and it can be very, very slow filming and you just, you, they move a lot of lights around. It can be half an hour, 40 minutes between just a shot and another shot. So you have to keep it fairly light hearted. Otherwise, it's 12 hours of everyone being quiet and waiting for something to happen. So, yeah, I like to make people... Uh, Keep people on their toes, definitely. Would you have any sort of uh, special things that you can remember that you've done that you're like, yes, that was a good one? I can't tell you what it was, but I was officially reported and given an official warning by the television channel. We must know! No. <laughs> oh, wow, dude. Do you know who reported you? Yeah. Oh, you but I know who reported me, but when he complained, he didn't leave his name at the bottom. So I said, wow. well, it's not really a complaint, is it, if he's not got not actually going to put his name to his complaint. So I got off in the end. But it was only fun and games. But, you know, fun and games is... You've got to be careful nowadays with what fun and games is. You it wasn't fun and did. games in that Me Too type way. It was fun and games in a slightly different way. So, uh, you know, you've had, you've had a lot of classical training, actually, haven't you? Have I? For these roles, yeah. I mean, When did I have my classical training? Well, Becoming Jane. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've done a few, uh, few costumey things, yeah. I think Becoming Jane was a similar type period, actually. I seem to remember the costumes were quite similar. I would hope you remember, for sure. I mean, Well, you don't. You tend to wipe a job once you finished it. I do, anyway. There's not enough room in the brain. And also, you, you went to RADA as well. That's a very good I did go to place RADA, to learn. Yeah, yeah RADA was, uh, it was, it was great. That's where you learn how to do it, and then you carry on learning on the job. It's, you never really work out how to do it, so you, you have to keep learning all the time. Would you say you're still learning now? Yeah. Um, my dad's still learning. He's 80. Yeah, so. Are you, you, did you swear at an audience member? Yeah, I did. There was a guy uh, doing a play, and um, there was a man. I felt sorry for him actually afterwards because he apologised a couple of days later. But he was on. He just had a back operation, and he was really mashed on painkillers, and um, he was drinking when he watched the play. And he was also a bit of a uh, historian. So when they were putting scenes that had happened between my character, which was Charles de Gaulle and Marshal Pétain of France, he said he would sort of rumble from the audience, this didn't happen in this area, it happened somewhere else. And he did that throughout <laughs> the play. And then he got steadily more wasted. And then I, no one did anything about it. And I thought, I'm gonna have to do something about it. So I called him some pretty rude words and left. Because, you know, it's, you've got a few hundred people in a room and if one person's sitting there giving it a bit, it's not fair on everybody else. What, what did the director do when you he was, were at the he audience? Was very, he, was, he was very much on my side and the audience were too, actually. Because, you know, it's an, you're, it's an agreement you make between the person who's performing and the audience that are out there. And the agreement is, you watch, I act, we all pretend that I'm a French colonel and we get on with it. And then, you know, and you, your brain wants to suspend its disbelief and watch and enjoy. So if someone's breaking what they call the fourth wall, you're in trouble. And I think there, it was in a theater where the ushers were not particularly experienced. And um, actually the next night, because the ushers really should have stopped it happening and come and took, taken away and said, you know, do you want to leave? But the next night, because I was a bit upset about it, obviously, because it ended up in the newspapers and I did my apology. But the next night I walked off stage and there was an usher on their mobile phone. Uh, which is also rude, and they're an usher, so I just took their mobile phone and dropped it in the toilet. Oh, I love that. Well done. Yeah. Chris, you know, you've got to learn, man. Like, that's <laughs> Old your job. school learning, that is, as well. <laughs> that's your job. <laughs> and uh, look, you're not just uh, a one-trick pony. You're also a very talented musician. And Thank I you. do say that from, you know, hearing you just 
practicing now, your your voice is like an angel. It's certainly say. not like an angel. It's a howling, howling, gruff voice. But I don't mind it. I like it. It's and uh, when did you get into that? You know, your debut album was 2016, so... 2016. Oh, yeah, I did an EP before that, 2013. Um, I got into it when I was... Similar time when I got into acting. And then uh, acting, I got acting jobs. And uh, I just carried on doing them hand in hand together. And then it all started doing quite well. So I, I just carry on doing it. You know, I, it's, it's a passion. So that's why I do it. And if you had to pick one, okay, yeah. I mean, you're already looking at me like, oh, I can't do that. But if you had to pick one. Why would I have to pick one? Well, right, we're playing a game, dude, if you had to pick one. No, I don't, I, I, they're the same thing. It's creativity. You know, it's not, it's, I, I don't operate like that. I don't think you can. I think you just do what you do. And um, I, I do understand why people do find it weird that people sometimes do two jobs. But, um, you know, I have enough time to do it. I, it. The only time it's ever a problem is if I've got to choose between the two. It, like someone goes, acting job or music job. I think I may choose the music job. Really? Well, it depends. It's just you, you, you've got more autonomy in it. And how do you actually have that much? So you just said you do have the time, but how? You, you're acting as well. And this is a serious thing, the music. Yeah. This isn't just like a hobby of yours. You're no. doing this professionally. Yeah. It's, I'm, I'm busy. But, you know, I got we, I have a week with the kids and then I have a week without the kids. And in the week without the kids, I tend to be busy. You rock on. Rock on. Yeah, <laughs> oh, God. I'm the loser. How has this happened? <laughs> <laughs> You're the cool dude and I'm the loser. Not at all. Actually, all the time. You should have seen school. Um, <laughs> we are going to have a live performance from you, actually, coming Why not? up right now. So we're going to set the stage. And we're all incredibly lucky. So uh, one more round of applause, please, for Lawrence Fox. <laughs> They have put something in the water They seek a cure for the conversation They stole a march on your indecision And the first to fall was laughter Just to quell the unoffended They seek to murder your opinion And the light has been turned out Replaced by blinding fires that burn wide across the region. For the wrong to rule, the good must just stand idly by. So I need you more than ever. I need your hand in this resistance. If we're going to go the distance. If I ever doubt it, I think about my future. And if I want to leave there, and the world outside is wondrous wide for a reason. And if you can't decide, you must blow your own mind for that reason. For the wrong to rule, the good must just stand idly by. And that's no love Can be hard to know what you're feeling What with all the lies that you're reading If it's hard to say you may mean it Don't be lost Thinking about tomorrow And today is what you are Replaced by blinding fires The burn wild across the region For the wrong to rule The good must just stand idly by So I need you more than ever I need your hand in this resistance If we're going to go the distance And if I ever doubt it If I want to leave
So I need you more than ever. I need your hand in this resistance. If we're going to go the distance. And if I ever doubt it, I think about my future. And if I want to leave. 